What does the recent settlement made by the National Association of Realtors mean for buyers, sellers, and agents? So what are the pros and cons for agents? Some of the pros are listing agents don't have to negotiate a buyer agent commission. For years, listing agents have had to determine what amount of commission would suffice to encourage buyer's agents to bring their buyers and write offers. Not the case moving forward. Another pro is many agents will likely leave the business and there will likely be fewer agents getting their license. The easiest start for less experienced agents was to work with buyers in large part because the vast majority of agents would be compensated whatever amount the listing agent offered to pay them through the MLS. Buyer agents usually didn't have to show their value and negotiate a fee with their buyer. To many buyers, an agent representing them did not cost them anything, so buyers didn't necessarily shop around for who could help them the best. They mostly focused on finding the right home and maybe who they enjoyed being with as they toured homes. Newer agents will likely struggle to convince a buyer to pay them as they learn how to do their job. Maybe this will have the added benefit of raising the bar for real estate agents. A con for agents might be that buyer agents have to negotiate their commission with buyers and possibly also sellers. I think most agents are freaking out right now about this and how it's gonna affect their business. They've always done things a certain way and now they have to make a big change. Oh no, this is actually a pro for me. For years, I've negotiated my fees with buyers regardless of what could be offered as compensation through the MLS or otherwise. This made sense to me, to charge my client for my services. Even though in most cases, if not all, my fee was covered by the listing agents offered compensation. Yet, in dozens of situations, I've experienced charging the buyers at closing or negotiating for the sellers to pay my entire fee. Most buyers wouldn't have a clue what their agent was getting paid until they signed at closing. Having clear expectations with my clients and informing them before writing an offer what to expect for my payment and their total fees seem to make more sense to me. Over the last 20 years, I've worked with most buyers through a buyer broker employment agreement. It was surprising to me how the vast majority of agents would shy away from ever dis having a discussion with buyers about how they're compensated other than saying that the sellers pay their commissions. How does this settlement affect the National Association of Realtors? The NAR has been fighting hard to avoid this change, but why? It boils down to one thing, money. NAR receives its income from its members, realtors, paying annual dues with the main benefits of getting access to their exclusive multiple listing services, or the MLS. There are two ways that this could crush the NAR's income, the value of the MLS and the number of agents. NAR was fighting hard to preserve their value to agents paying membership fees for access to the MLS because it guaranteed payment to buyer's agents to bring buyers to the listings, regardless of whether the agent had ever sold a home before or was the number one agent. If agents don't have to use the NAR's sponsored MLS systems, there may be new and less expensive alternatives for agents to market homes and less of a need to be a realtor. What might hurt NAR even more is the number of agents in general. These changes could make it more challenging for many people to be real estate agents and deter many from getting a license. I think this could greatly decrease NAR's income. If the National Association of Realtors was going to crumble, this ruling will be the cause. If you have any questions or comments about how this could affect you as a home buyer, a home seller, or an agent, feel free to reach out. I'm Rob Hale, the Elite Results Team Leader, and I'm excited for what's to come.